Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to today's session. In today's session, we are going to see how to create an ensemble model for image classification in deep learning. What is ensemble model? Ensemble model is combining different models together for the image classification task. Instead of creating a single model and trying to improve the accuracy of that model, it is always better to create multiple models which can be which can extract different features because each model has its own advantages and disadvantages so you can use multiple models and try to combine the predictions of those models now how will you combine the predictions of these models there are different techniques to combine the predictions either you can take um, uh, a simple average or you can take weighted average uh, when you will go for weighted averages when a particular model performs very well but particular model doesn't performs very well you can give a uh, high weightage for model for a high performing model and low weightage for the model which performs very low so you can use weighted average or you can create a new learning algorithm which learns which model is best and the predictions uh, final predictions are done from multiple models so the different ways to uh, stack the models so uh, here in the session, I'm just going to show you how to use a simple uh, prediction technique just to take an average of uh, multiple models. So here you can see I have a single data set. The data set is trained on different classifiers. Uh, you can take multiple uh, models and classify uh, the same data set and you will get the predictions. The predictions are combined using average prediction. So this is an ensemble model. The ensemble model takes an average of all the model predictions and it gives the final prediction. So this is what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you a short demo of how to create the ensemble model. Let's go to the demo. Okay, the data set I'm going to take for today is uh, gastritis data set. So here you can see the images and it has around uh, uh, eight classes. So you can see this is a data set. So here uh, in my code you can see I have uh, unzipped the data set. The data set is available for free in uh, Kaggle. I will give you the link of the data set in the description box. Now I have used the argumentation technique to uh, increase the number of images in the data set. So I have installed the argumenter here. I have imported the argumenter here. So this is my uh, source directory where I have my data set. The argumented images will be available in this data set after argumentation. Now uh, my data set has 8000 images. So now I'm going to increase uh, the number of samples in my data set by rotating my image. So I'll be rotating, I will do left rotation, right rotation, and then I'll zoom the image so I will increase the number of samples. So how many samples I want to increase is around 12,000 samples. So from 8,000, the number of samples will go to uh, 12,000 samples. So this is my data argumentation. So once the data argumentation is done, my final images is available in this folder. So it's available in the output folder. Here you can see here. Now we are going to divide our data set into training and testing data set. So uh, it's around percentage, 80 percentage will be my training and 20 percentage will be my validation or um, you can call it as testing as well. So now we have 9,600 images in the training uh, set and 2,400 in the validation set. Now we have to normalize uh, our data. You will see it's an image. So the pixel will vary from one to 255. So we're going to normalize so that the pixel values will be converted to zeros and ones. So after that is done, now uh, we are going to load the models. Now the model that I'm going to use is a pre-trained model. In one of my previous video, I have showed you how to use a pre-trained model on the um, image data set. I will give the link of that video also in the description box. So I have used VGG16. Now in this video, I'm going to use a pre-trained model. The model is Inception V3. Now what is the advantage of using a pre-trained model is you need not create any model from the scratch. These models are the uh, best models uh, which are trained on the image data set. Uh, sorry, uh, trained on the ImageNet data set. So you just, you can load the model and then you can modify your output layer as it is required uh, for your uh, input data set. So I'm going to use the Inception V3 model, which is already developed. So I'm just going to uh, load that model uh, and the weights of the model, everything I'm going to load, the weights will be related to ImageNet 
data set so i'm going to load that model now uh, when i'm loading the model i will remove the uh, top layers because uh, the data set that i'm going to use um, is different from the image net in image net i have different classes but in uh, data set which i'm going to use for today is having only eight classes so i will remove the uh, top layers so top layers so you have to include top layers equal to false so I'm going to take that model inception v3 as a base model and I'm going to add some new layers on the top so here you can see uh, the new layers are uh, global average pooling layer dense layer uh, dropout layer and this is my output layer final layer which has uh, uh, eight neurons because I have only eight classes so to my base model I am adding these new layers okay so what will be my input my input will be my uh, base base layer okay that is base model and my output will be my um, output layer this is output layer which has eight classes <clears throat> okay so this is my uh, first model that I'm going to use for my uh, ensemble learning so uh, now this is the second model that I'm going to use. The second model that I'm going to use is a VGG16 model. Again, I'm going to uh, load the VGG16 model, which is already available, a pre-trained model. And I'm going to um, uh, remove the top layers. Okay, and then I'm going to add new layers on the top, like uh, average global pooling, dense layer, dropout layer. Okay, and this will be my output layer. In the output layer, I have eight classes okay so this is my model number two so my model number one is inception v3 and model number two is my vgg 16 so i have loaded two uh, models now what is the advantage of uh, loading this pre-trained model as i told you is you need not train any model from the scratch so here you can see trainable is equal to false so the base model i'm not going to train my base model i'm going to train only these top layers that i have added so you need not to train anything from the a scratch that is the advantage of pre-trained models okay and um, after finishing the two models now I'm going to uh, create a checkpoint uh, the checkpoint is uh, actually done uh, to save the points where the validation accuracy is improving okay so it uh, saves a model um, whenever the validation accuracy is improving now I'm going to uh, compile my model 1 and compile my model 2 and then I'm going to call the fit function for model 1 and fit function for model 2 separately so this is my model 1 model 1 is inception v3 so here you can see uh, the point where the validation accuracy is improving uh, there all it will be the model will be saved so here you can see the model is saved to the drive because the validation accuracy is improving so here you can see the validation accuracy is improved to 0.73 and all these points the validation accuracy did not improve so the validation accuracy is 0 0.73 finally and uh, this is a graph now this is my model 2 model 2 is vgg16 here you can see uh, the validation accuracy is not improved at all when compared to the previous model so vgg16 is not uh, performing well when compared to inception v3 so there are two models now I'm going to combine these two models yeah here so you have to load your model 1 and load your model 2 okay load your model 2 then combine both the models so here you can see model 1 comma model 2 you're combining both the models okay and then you're creating an ensemble model so how uh, you will create an ensemble model you're going to average the predictions of two models okay so this is your ensemble model now the input will be model input output will be your ensemble output ensemble output will be average of all these two models this is your ensemble model now you have to compile your ensemble model and call fit for ensemble model so when you start training your ensemble model you can see the validation accuracy is around you can see here it's around 90 percentage is around 90 percentage the validation accuracy which is much greater than the previous two models so when you train a model separately you get less validation accuracy when you uh, ensemble when you create an ensemble of both the model you can see the validation accuracy is improving 
so there's only two models you can use more than uh, two models um, and try different combinations and check uh, when your validation accuracy is much better so here you can see this is the uh, graph and this is the confusion matrix so here you can see this is a confusion matrix it's much better than creating a single model so here i've just shown you only about two models you can try with uh, four or five models stacking together and creating a, a average uh, prediction or you can also go for weighted average so when you see a particular model performs very poor when compared to the other model you can give low weightage for that particular model and the model which is performing much better, you can give a higher weightage. So weighted average also gives you uh, good results. Or you can create a new learner algorithm which learns by itself uh, which model is uh, best and then uh, it uh, uses that model for prediction. So you can also create a learning algorithm by yourself. So there are different ways to combine uh, the models. Um, I think uh, this session made you clear about uh, what is example learning. Uh, we will meet uh, in another session with such a, a good idea. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. See you in the next session.